What is going on guys, welcome to another video and today I want to specifically address my potential future kindred spirits in the form of anyone that is currently training for or thinking about training for the Royal Marines. As the thumbnail and the title would suggest, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail today on how to balance both weight training, basically strength training, and running. Developing a good level of strength, stability and power and also developing kind of a good baseline aerobic engine and the skill set that is kind of what will probably be middle distance running are both absolutely vital in commando training and basically vital to a point to develop a foundation of each of them on the run up to commando training but how do we bolt these two together to make sure that we develop them at the same time. How to do that and a rough training plan of how to make sure that we do both of those in the same kind of meso cycle within a week is exactly what we're gonna talk about now. Firstly, I wanna say that when you are in commando training, you do not really do that much typical gym work in terms of you know what we would class as functional bodybuilding or weightlifting. We don't do that much barbell work at all. However, that is not to say that you won't benefit from doing a certain amount in the run up just to build that level of kind of postural stability and kind of body weight strength. And strength not only of your own body weight, but of external resistance as well. The idea that you don't need to do any weight training at all on the run up to any kind of military service is a little bit kind of out dated and archaic now and I absolutely guarantee you'll be more strong and stable, less likely to get injured, more powerful, quicker and just generally all round more robust if you do a certain amount of appropriate weight training on the runner. Getting straight into it guys, I'm going to say this straight away, running and strength training are two different components and although there may be certain situations where you are kind of required to execute both these things in, in exa at exactly the same time, the chances are that's gonna be very rare. It's not very common that you're gonna be required in commando training to train these things together. Most of the time they're gonna be trained separately. And for a couple of physiological reasons that I'll get to in a second, I absolutely 100% advise that in generalities, you train these separately now. Why should I train them separately, Jim? Well, there exists this uh, kind of physiological reaction called cross-signaling, which is where basically if we're attempting to develop kind of maximal strength and a little bit of kind of hypertrophy, so kind of functional muscle building as well, muscle strengthening, and we're also attempting to develop an aerobic side of things with kind of a baseline aerobic foundation from running. If you give the body both of these kind of stimuli at the same time, it doesn't really know what to adapt to. This is why hybrid training is kind of increasingly popular. And although kind of CrossFitters train maximum strength and aerobic stuff at the same time, it is extraordinarily backed up by science that you will adapt to both of those things better and you will generally have a better baseline if you train them separately. That is to say, have strength sessions and have running and aerobic sessions. Can you do them on the same day? In theory, you can. I personally would leave kind of an eight hour gap minimum between. So do an AM session, a PM session, but make sure there's a big enough gap. So it starts its adaptation process when effectively you finish the session. So if you're gonna go for a run in the morning, make sure you go for your run, have a decent amount of time, like hours and hours and hours and hours, and all of those physiological adaptations are going on in the background to make your aerobic system better, to recover from the run, and then you can do a strength session later in the day. But getting into the nitty gritty now, guys, I literally think that chopping it down the middle, having three strength sessions and three endurance sessions is a phenomenal way to start. There's a little biological individuality in this, and different people are super responders to different components but as a baseline you can't go far wrong if you do that so doing a bit of a deep dive then into what these strength sessions could look like if we have three strength sessions a week i think it is a very good idea to have a lower body focus strength session an upper body focus strength session and then a full body strength session with some slightly higher rep ranges towards the end of the week what do those sessions look like well you could do uh, lower body strength on monday upper body wednesday and then full body kind of slightly more slightly higher rep range like functional bodybuilding stuff on a friday and then your runs on a tuesday thursday saturday so if we get into the lower body strength stuff first the good news is there aren't that many variables that we need for this there are three core things we need to do to make sure that we implement them into our lower body session and regardless of anything else, as long as you tick those three boxes, you're gonna be golden. The first one is basically a major compound lift, some kind of squat 
or deadlift variation. I'm a huge fan of box squats. I just think they're really, really good for kind of consistently going down to the same point. I think they're really, really good for people who are built in a slightly longer, limier way. If you're a little bit taller and you've got long limbs, you're not going to do very well with Ask the Grass Squats. So box squats are a really good kind of variation. And if your gym has a safety bar and you have the availability to do safety bar squats, one million percent get on that. The second thing you need in your lower body session is some kind of specific hip extension exercise. This could be a Romanian deadlift. It could be a hyper extension. It could be a glute bridge. It could even be a good morning if you're feeling super spicy and your lower back can handle it. Hip extension exercises like this focus on what's called your posterior chain, which is basically the connection of your lower back, your glutes and your hamstrings. And these three kind of like super explosive power levers work together to basically pull us out of a hinge and into a straight line. So it's basically extending the hips, hence the name. And the third thing we need in a lower body session is some kind of unilateral exercise. That is to say single leg, lunges, step ups, or Bulgarian split squats are three amazing variations of this. Rep range wise, it depends what we wanna do. If we're focusing more on strength stuff, anywhere between kind of like two and five, two and six. And if we're happy to go kind of a little bit higher and get a little bit more of a burn, anywhere between kind of five and 12 reps is a good place to land. But I know your mindset, you're flipping ambitious. If you weren't, you wouldn't be prepping for the Royal Marine Corps. So what I suggest that you do is do three to four sets of anywhere between kind of six and 10 of these three exercises and then finish off with like a little burner. So goblet squats, just holding a little dumbbell in front of you and jump lunges, do a 10 down to one. 10 squats, 10 lunges, nine squats, nine lunges and go all the way down. Get a little extra pump, your legs are gonna be feeling warm after that. What should the upper body session look like on Wednesday? Well, again, it's a little bit more kind of complicated here, but as long as you hit four primary movement patterns, once again, you are golden. I'm a big fan of mirror supersets on this, so some kind of horizontal push and horizontal pull are really, really, really good foundations. So some kind of bench press variation followed by some kind of row, seated row, bent over row. You can do a body weight inverted row with a weight vest as you're seeing here. Exactly the same guys, if you're looking for strength, anywhere between two and six. If you're happy to go a little bit higher in terms of numbers, anywhere between five and 12 will do you right. That's the first two movement patterns. The second two movement patterns are basically just flip it into vertical. So a vertical push and a vertical pull. Some kind of overhead variation. I'm a huge fan of single arm stuff for this, like a Philly press or a half kneeling single arm overhead. You can always add a band to it if you wanna get a little bit more power. And then the vertical pull is basically a lat pull down or primarily for you guys as everyone needs to develop this, some kind of pull up variation. If you just do pull ups as many reps as you can pretty much all the time, why not give it a go to do some strength stuff here? So either some controlled eccentric tempo where we go down a little bit slower or put a little bit of weight on a belt and then get under that and then make sure that you're lifting a little bit more than your own body weight. If you can get to a stage where you've got 20 kilos on a weight belt and you're doing five, six reps of that on a pull-up, body weight stuff is gonna feel super easy. And then again, if you fancy a little bit of a finisher, do some press-ups and other stuff, 10 down to one again, and it's a great way to just kind of get a little bit of growth hormone release in there as well. The full body hypertrophy stuff, I'm a big fan of upper lower supersets on this particular day and implementing some kind of like strongman stuff. So any like sandbag squats, sandbag lunges or sandbag step ups, that kind of thing is a really, really good way to start. And then implementing some other like strongman modalities, like some farmer's walks, some sled pushes and pulls. These things are literally the foundational movements of human performance and will serve you really, really well. Just make sure we partner that with some full range stuff to make sure that around the shoulders and the hips we're working everything at full range as well. I won't go too much into detail on that, but if you are interested more in what that full body hypertrophy, again, hypertrophy is kind of muscle building, but I will reiterate this now, putting on a little bit of lean muscle before you join the Royal Marines is not gonna make you slow. It is only gonna make you more stable. You are not gonna be a big useless bodybuilder just because you do a little bit of functional lifting in the gym. If you do no functional lifting at all, you are gonna be weak as piss because you can't flip and flex bone and you are gonna end up in Hunter. So I implore you, implement some kind of strategic lifting into your routine. You'll just be more robust and you'll thank me for it. Any more questions on what that functional hypertrophy session could look like, put them down in the comment section below and I will ensure that I get back to each and every one of you. Moving on now, I said earlier that we are gonna do three endurance sessions. Now let's take a little bit of a look at what they could look like. Let's look at the first running session of the week and say this is now on a Tuesday. This is our sprint session where we're focusing on shorter distances. I'm a huge fan generally of hill sprints. I think they're an amazing way to slightly decrease 
what's called the eccentric load, so the amount your foot's kind of slamming into the ground, which again, you will need to get used to to a point, but there's no need to overdo it. Overtraining before you start marine training is one of the biggest causes of injury. So doing some hill sprints is just a great way to kind of develop a little bit of lactic, develop some amazing aerobic base, but taking a little bit of the impact out of there. If you don't want to do those, make sure that you are on some flat and even ground. Don't be sprinting through a field with loads of potholes that you can't see. I reckon the distances that you should be running, so effectively your reps, could be anywhere between one and 300 meters. Do a certain number of those and you want about 60 to 120 seconds rest between, which isn't gonna feel like a lot, but just getting used to A, moving a little bit quicker and B, the mechanics of so the way that you're gonna run 200 meters is gonna be very different from the way that you're gonna run a mile and a half. But the good news is, or something you should be very, 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 very aware of, is the amount of stuff that you're doing in the gym. So basically for the first kind of nine, 10 weeks of commando training, you are gonna be doing a lot more sprinting than you are told go run a mile and a half. A mile and a half is what everyone focuses on, but very few people try and develop their ability to run quickly, run safely and run well beforehand. So if you've got a decent ability to cover 100 to 200 meters and then recover very quickly in literally just one to two minutes, you are gonna be way, way, way flipping ahead of the game. So that's the first run session. The second run session, say it's on a Thursday, is what's called the tempo or threshold work. This is where effectively, this is still interval training, but the reps, the intervals are significantly longer. We're looking anywhere between 600 meters and a kilometer for the reps here. So obviously again, the speed that we're running and also the mechanics, the way that we actually move, is definitely going to change as well. The interesting thing on this is that the rest period time, I, I advise, is still only between 60 and 120 seconds. And the reason for that is with everything we do for you guys aerobically, your endurance, we want to basically chip away at your body's ability to recover quicker. That's going to serve you very well moving forwards. You could do four reps of a 1K run, and then have a slightly longer break of about five minutes and then four more reps or something like that. Again, infinitely scalable and we don't need to be too prescriptive. But if you just remember it as kind of a general threshold approach and basically try to keep the reps or the intervals in the realm of 600 meters to 1,000 meters between one and two minutes break and then go again. The total session should last kind of anywhere between 45 minutes and an hour. So that's all three strength sessions done. The first two run sessions done. Let's look at the third and final run session now. Significantly easy to communicate. This is the one where basically we're just building an aerobic base and your ability to maintain a certain cadence, a certain mechanics, when it's going up or downhill, and a certain breathing pattern and kind of to adapt to that for basically a steady state. So you wanna be going for anywhere between kind of 30 and 75 minutes. And again, it's gonna change, the speed's gonna be slightly different depending on that. But if you can get to the stage where you're running for you know 45 to 60 minutes at a conversational pace and you develop the ability to basically hold a certain speed, that becomes your automatic cruise pace, you're sorted. So again, running is not just running, there are different elements to it. Mechanics change, we wanna be quick, but we also wanna be able to hold a longer distance pace and to make sure that we're not holding a certain pace and it feels easy, but then after 20 minutes, we start to feel ourselves collapse and then everything breaks down. That's not what we want. So just building that, that, that aerobic base and our ability to be able to withstand the force of running on the road, on the tracks, on the hills, the mountains, whatever it flipping may be, is again, it's a game changing kind of skill set to have. Guys, there's a lot of information thrown at you there. So thank you for getting this far in the video. If you have enjoyed it, please do smash the like button. The biggest favor, the biggest thing you could ever do for me is please do share this video with someone just like you, maybe some of the other guys that you know that are interested in joining the Royal Marines or any other part of the military. As I mentioned earlier, if you have any questions or anything, please do put them in the comment section down below and I'll make sure that I get back to each and every one of you. I really hope this has been valuable. If you have not yet done so, please do subscribe. And as always, beautiful people, stay strong, stay healthy, stay awesome, and I'll see you soon.